right on Netflix, available for streaming. Season two's already been picked up. Netflix right here on Roku. Travis Van Winkle of FUBAR here on The Rich Eisen Show. When you first got a, a call to say, hey, something's up with Arnie and you're part of it or can be part of it, when did that happen for you? Walk me through that moment. I was in Toronto filming uh, a CBS show called Good Sam, and my agents had given me some other auditions to go out for. And, uh-huh. and I remember I was like, I, I don't want to go out on these. I want that Arnold show. And I remember them saying, just go out for these other things. We don't know about the Arnold show yet. And I just had this thing in me that was like, I, God, I just feel like I'm going to get this show. And I got the call, and my agents and my manager all started talking like, their their best impression of Arnold. Yeah. They're like, you got the show. Congratulations. It's like <laughs> I've gotten better at doing the accent. They're not so great at it. Right, um, right, right. But I have this incredible footage of me in a hotel room in Toronto and being you know, FaceTiming with my agents and manager. And it was a it's, it's an incredible moment just to know that I was gonna get to work with Arnold. I've mm-hmm. I have respected the man my whole life. I've looked up to him, I've learned from him, I've watched interviews, I've watched all his films, I've idolized his body and then to be able to actually share space with him it was uh it was intimidating at first to think like oh dang yeah i'm right. like i'm gonna go work with this guy right i've known him my whole life he doesn't even know who i am and this, <laughs> there's this weird you know celebrity thing that happens where like i've known him forever and built up this expectation right and then you just have to normalize it so when i first met him i just threw everything at him about what i respected I went out like of my Like right way. away? Yep. I met him and I just said, hey, I got to get this out of the way. I said, I respected him for his movies and for bodybuilding and all these things. And then I felt like I could build a relationship with him. Right. How does he take, how did he take it from you? Like Easily. He's, he's adored everywhere. So uh, it was, I think he appreciated it. Uh, and but it, that was more for me than for him. It was like for <laughs> me to get that out of the way so I could like even the playing field a little bit. Wouldn't that have been great if he had just reversed it and basically told you about your entire filmography and TV history? And... That would have blown my mind. <laughs> we, we had an Instagram live not too long ago promoting the show. And I said, Arnold, uh, you know, a lot of people ask me if I was nervous to meet you. But were you nervous to meet me? Uh-huh. And he's like, uh, he goes... He's like, yeah, every time you came in the room, the heat would turn up. But he goes, but but not because uh, I was intimidated, but because your abs. He's like, I haven't seen my abs in 30 years. He's like, <laughs> he's like you have amazing abs. And wow. Now I, that and I was like, thanks, is the highest compliment. Like, okay. no, this is a very good Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's not bad. I've, it, I've, no, I've been able to refine it a well, bit. Because you, you, I think you're, you're not totally over the top with it. It does. That sounds very good. Like well, what, what you. nuances have you picked up being around him? What do you got for me? From the accent specifically? Whatever you got. Whatever you want to tell. Um, you must get this a lot because I would tell if, if I was hanging out with Arnold Schwarzenegger or working with him, I, I would get nonstop questions about what the so hell it like around him. So here's what I know about him. He, he walks around. He, what I believe is that if you feel respect, you have to share it. Mm-hmm. Um, so for you, first of all, I want to share that I have connected with my dad over sports for many years, and you've been a part of that on the NFL Network and and all, all of your, your work that you've done, Thank you. it's been a connecting point for my father and I, so your work is important. And I haven't and, seen my abs in 30 years either, well, so I guess that's another thing I'm connected with Arnold, so I'll take that. There's still time. <laughs> so, but what, what, what I've learned from him is he gives respect everywhere he goes. Mm-hmm. He talks about not being self-made. He's like, everyone else has made me. Mm-hmm. Everyone else has made my success possible. And every event that I've been to, Every time he's had to speak publicly, he will go out of his way to make sure everyone in the room feels seen, valued, and heard, and respected. And yeah. then he goes on to talk about, you know, his his life. But that's something I've learned, and I, I really value that. And the neat thing is, like, when, when you see this show, um, and you've seen the entirety of it, right, Chris? Yeah, yeah, okay. me and TJ have ripped through this. Right, and I'm, I'm in process with three kids ripping through it. Um, <laughs> There's a true lies feel to this thing. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Like that. This this feels like something that's part of his collection. Yeah. It 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 works. You know what I mean. Well, that was his favorite film. He, he it s- is. publicly speaks about that often. That that was such a, a great film for him, and it came after Last Action Hero, which didn't do well, and that that didn't sit with him well. You mm-hmm. know, having a movie that he really loved and respected not be received. And so True Lies came after that. And then True Lies put him really back on the map in a big way. And um, 
I believe he reached out to Netflix and said, I want to do a show like that. And so they just made, made something happen. And, and now so, here it is. And now we're here. See, for me, if I had to choose one, and I know this is, this is not many people would do that, but The Running Man for me mm. is, I don't know, maybe because, again, there's a it's game a show element to it. Richard Dawson's in it as, the, as the, the criminal. Jesse Ventura before he was the mind. Jim yeah. Brown, yeah. right? Jim Brown was in it. Um, I was always Total Recall guy because Total I was recall, younger and, and the woman had three boobs. And I'm like, that's the coolest thing. <laughs> I was thinking it. I wasn't going to say it. Yeah. I'm glad that you did. I was in high school. Yeah. I was like, that was the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. So out of everything in Total Recall, <laughs> that's the only thing I remember. it's groundbreaking filmmaking. That's what you, that, that's what I guess you're in high school. Well, I was in high school. Yeah. Sharon Stone's in it too. I mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah. She wasn't the one with the she, three? She, she did not have not the three. No? No. no. But, she just right? two. Yeah, she's uh, just in it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Very good. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. <laughs> Travis Van Winkle here on the Rich Eisen Show. So when did you, what's your first big break? Like, when did you get your, I was just telling a story about my first big break literally before you walked out here. What about yours? Yeah, I'm still waiting for it. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah. Come on. We'll see what um No, like, when I you first got into this, this business, like, what was it? My first... I would say I got a guest star spot on That's So Raven, and that was a big deal for me because okay. it was the first time that it was going to be an episode based around my character. And yes. I was going to be the main guest. But a year after that, I got a movie called Accepted mm -hmm. with Justin Long and Jonah Hill and Blake mm -hmm. Lively and mm -hmm. um, Tom Shadiak was a producer on there. And, sure. Um, and the movie was called Accepted. And so for me, you were. I'm like, wait a second. Mm -hmm. It's 2005. I moved here in, uh, to LA in 2003 and jumped yeah. into the business and I thought, wow, I'm, I'm accepted to begin this path. Look at you. And uh, I feel like that was a moment for me. Well, then let's just leave that there because if you're going to continue to extrapolate it out that the uh, titles of your shows mean something, FUBAR would probably be a bad one. Yeah, they don't always work. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can... Like, because, you know. But, but how about this? Yes. Um, freedom. Okay. Should we do freedom? We can because uh, we can't say the other one. We can't. We can't. Uh, we can't uh, use the other one yeah. right here. Yep. Okay. Freedom upended beyond all repair. <laughs> Look oh. at you. Words. You can always justify whatever you need to make it work for yourself okay. to continue the narrative that you want. <laughs> you <st> <laughs> I like you saying that that way. Um, do you still get residuals from that cell, Raven? Do you get a residual check? Yeah, I think I'm like in the the cents category. Like I oh. probably get like fifty or sixty. Good for you. Yeah, I'm still yeah. like in that. I zone. just got a check from my appearance. I'll call it that. Well, actually, star turn on CSI Miami, oh, playing wow. uh, male reporter. Oh. I believe that was that one, um, where the check was for three cents, forty-seven cents fewer than the stamp required to send it to me. Not bad. Isn't it? Not bad. See, I'm with you. I was on CSI Miami for an episode. Is I had, that right? I had a mustache, and I don't think I was a good person. You were not? <laughs> yeah. Did, did uh, Caruso come get you? Did he put you behind bars? Are you that? Were you that guy? Or did Rex Lynn get you? Who got you in that <laughs> episode? Caruso, yeah. Like, we had, we had some moments. Um, I actually, I mean, it was so long ago, I don't remember. I just remember the mustache, and somehow that signified I was a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, Travis Van Winkle here on the Rich Eisen Show. So you're from Georgia. Does that mean your sports teams correlate to that as well? Or they no? used to. I used to be a big UGA fan. You know, I was always a Hawks fan and you know, Falcons, so all you, that stuff. You didn't stick with Georgia? Because I mean, the last two years would have been great if you'd been, if you're still, you know, with Aga yeah. and the rest of the group. What you happened? You know, I kind of fell off. I feel like I'm. I used to be such a huge sports junkie mm -hmm. and I loved it. And I was so called to watch it and mm -hmm. I was obsessed with it. And, and as the years have gone on, you know, the, the fire isn't just leading me there anymore. And I'll have moments where I lock, I'll lock into the NBA playoffs okay, or I'll, I'll be obsessed with the UFC fighter. Um, Who are you obsessed with right now? UFC. I mean, I want to see John Jones fight Nagano, but I think that they've separated divisions. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's not going to happen. But, um, I kind of just get into every That's fighter. I, I appreciate that sport. It is poetry, man. Those guys, those guys have to be multidisciplinary. And if you look at the UFC when it first started, mm. you would have the different disciplines all fighting each other. There's no weight class, no real time uh, period where they fight, and it was just wild. And now every fighter 
has to know every discipline. And so it is such a dynamic sport. That's what I've been more interested in okay. recently. But the NBA is another sport that is just I'm so impressed with, okay. with these athletes. Well, I mean, when you're talking about UFC, is it, 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 Am I not mistaken? You're in a Roadhouse remake. Yeah, yeah. With Conor McGregor, is that a true story? Is he That's, part of this thing? Yeah, he. I got to to spend some time with him, and and he is similar to Arnold. They just have this thing where they're like, "I'm going to make this movie the best. There's going to be a sequel. It's going to make the most money." Mm -hmm. He just he's like, "I'm going to get back into fighting. I'm going to get the championship." He's always just talking about being the best. Mm. And him and Arnold are buddies, and I see why. And also, if you want to learn how to speak with the Arnold accent, saying Connor is a good gateway. Oh, Con Connor. 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 Wow. It was a Terminator, right? Isn't it? Yeah. John Sarah, yes. Connor. 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 That's right. Yeah. Connor. That's right. It's all Connor. connected. Oh, yeah. So, I thought that's where you were going with that mm -hmm. one because he's been, you know, John Connor. Mm -hmm. I just know that that's, it flows off the tongue, and my mom always wants to speak like Arnold, and she's terrible at it. <laughs> um, and so I say, Mom, just say Connor. Just start with Connor. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, because everyone does do the, uh, the, uh, the yeah, over yeah. the top thing, and it's like, come yeah. on. Yeah, you've got this down. I mean, I'm, I mean, I had to speak with a puppet because you watched the, the series funny. at the yeah. end. Yeah. I had to actually <laughs> you speak really from funny. with an Arnold puppet, so I was like, I had to, I had to work That's on a it. Therapy session. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't talk about say, like him wanting to like have me impregnate his daughter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but mine goes into Christopher Walken if I let it loose. Like I end up going, <laughs> yeah. So it's be he, careful. Yeah, there's right? a line. There's right. a fine line between Schwarzenegger morphing into <laughs> Walken. Yeah, Walken. Yeah. You can't. You don't want to. You don't want to go full Walken nah, if yeah, you're yeah. trying to be. Um, so have you smoked cigars with Arnold? Have you done that? I have. I have. What's and, it? What's it like smoking cigars with Arnold Schwarzenegger? You know, I'm not a big cigar guy, but because. Uh, I wanted to just, you know, be cool and hang yeah. out with him more and on set. Yeah. I started smoking cigars and, um, man, I'm terrible at it. Um, I they just like burn your eyeballs. And, you know, I feel like I, I went so hard into my first cigar because yeah. I just thought I could and I had yeah. no cigar endurance and I got so sick. <laughs> but I was just like pushing through, just trying to make it because I was hanging out with Arnold. Um, but as the season went on, I got better at it. So yeah. now I'm. I can pace myself. So, you, so your first time, Arnold, did, did he like your cigar? Did he you did not it? like my cigar, but he always has a really nice selection. Okay. For so, you, yeah. So did he guide you through it? Did you, did you? I asked him which one was the lighter one. Okay. Yep. All and right. then, you know, I said, give me the little choppy choppy thing. <laughs> uh, what do I do with that thing? <laughs> Technical term. Uh, yeah, I think that's what it's called. Yep. And then. Yes. Yeah. And, so know, then you. I lit the thing choppy up. Choppy choppy. Choppy choppy. And you litty lit. Yeah, let it up. Itself. And then we You're, smoke, you smoke, damn. But then you you had to understand. Did you panic? Like, oh, God, I am feeling violently ill here, and I can't show it, right? I mean, your acting skills will have to take over here Yeah, I definitely Arnold. put on a little bit of a show of like, yeah, I mean, it's cool. Everything's great. Um, <laughs> when it started, at first it was, because at first you get a little bit of that, yeah. that cigar buzz where you're like, this is, life is awesome. <laughs> like, life is great. And then, and then it took a turn. And then it's like life wasn't so great, but I had to pretend like life was great. And then, uh, and then eventually, I, I just had to put it down. And he's like, "Pace yourself." Um, oh, he saw it. You think you could see? Yeah. He did. So I, I'm learning. You know, I'm learning. Okay. I just want to be great at smoking cigars. Season two, you'll be yeah, a by pro. Yeah. <laughs> by season two, you'll be you know searching for the predator. It'll be fantastic with that thing just down to the nub. The whole bit. I never thought that I would want to be good at smoking cigars, but that's. <laughs> Hey, kind man, of you got to be careful with those things. If you don't smoke them normally, you got to be very careful, certainly around someone like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know. Yeah. That's like trying to hit home runs, you know, with Aaron Judge. Like, let me just swing yeah. for the fences right here, and you don't want to just hit yourself in your, you know, in your, yeah. your follow-through. Baby steps. Travis Van Winkle here, uh, FUBAR, available for season two already. Congratulations on all of that. Um, come Thanks. back. Come back anytime you want. Yeah. Say hi to your father for me. I will. I will. So I, just, you, I just got to take him to the Indy 500 for his 65th birthday. Hey, okay. What was that like? Incredible, because that race race cars. That's his lane. Like his, he loves that stuff. Okay. And, um, for me, I I, was, I thought we were going to NASCAR. 
Um, and I got them. Like, oh, this isn't. <laughs> this isn't. Uh, um, my dad loves it, and we got yeah. to go into the pits. We got to ride in in the actual cars around the track. Which and, car did you get to ride in? Do you remember? We went 200 miles an hour. So whatever. Um, <laughs> in the in Indy cars. We were in the Indy cars. No, I just any like, specific any drivers oh, specific. No. No, they have a, on on the day before the race. They basically just have a whole thing set up where I don't even know who the driver is, but you just. So what did you say, Chris? Was it the two person? Because we've yes. done that with yeah, Mario and Dreddy. So yeah, we, we did, did the two person yeah. with Mario, yeah. but but we didn't we didn't do it on the in the brickyard. We did it in no, Long Beach. Long Beach, very different. Which is you know a road course where there are things like quick turns <laughs> oh, that yeah. come up very quickly uh-huh. and. I, I rode in that one with Mario Andretti, okay? Wow. After you had ridden in it, right? I had done it years and years before. Right, and then and I finally got, got sick. I got to yeah. do it. And sort of like, you know, you were smoking a cigar yeah. with Arnold. I'm like, when it first got in there, I'm like, this isn't that bad. Mm-hmm. I think I got it. And then we got around the first turn, and I'm like, violently ill. Oh, it's man. It's the same thing. Yeah. And I'm kind of like having a... Stay cool, because I know there's a <laughs> GoPro on me, and I don't want to like get... There it is, right there. There I am, right there. <laughs> And um, I'm just trying to stay cool, but I am screaming inside and then just wow. saying to myself, OK, I got to live in the moment. Mario Andretti is driving me around the Long Beach Grand Prix course and I should just enjoy be this. Cool, cool. And then I'm sitting there thinking, how old is this guy for real? Am I like re- mid 70s? What the hell yeah. am I doing? Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. And is yeah. this before the cars? Uh, I know they didn't used to have the next. Yeah, track. the Hans. No, this is this is this is with all the the safety gotcha. precautions in there. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Because that was the main thing that I was so happy about was they they like, got you strap your neck and where well, you can't. You plus, can't we weren't going two hundred. We weren't yeah, hitting we were two hundred. We weren't going. You that know, because this is, again, we're, there's no like you know long ass straightaways but you were going up on the on the yeah on the on the wall and the turns and everything like that wild and right out of the pit they just they they hit it (laughs) (laughs) it was incredible because they keep they can't hear you but they do have the the gopro but i i definitely screamed with joy (laughs) oh joy okay oh my god i've jumped out of planes before i mean i've i've I've, I've done things it was i talking about it was exciting i just didn't see the torque was the thing that i did not expect it was uh it was but my dad had he had the best time because we got awesome. to meet the drivers oh, that's great we got to be right there on the pit during the race like it was it was a, a moment that's awesome yeah because i again i i wanted to make sure that i was as cool as i could be for mario andretti <laughs> so when it was all over they handed me the milk oh. and i'm like i'm gonna show mario oh god just in case he heard me screaming in the back seat <laughs> i just i did it in one swig just downed it like shotgun. And I hope it. you're not lactose intolerant. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I took my pill first. Okay, no. like, like whatever it takes to look cool right now. That's what it was like. Now yeah. they give the guys almond milk or oat milk or whatever you want. You can request your. Can you really milk. do oh, that? That, now? Was, that was my question. Like, well, if you're lactose intolerant, why? Like, that's going to be awful yeah, for a couple days. Awful. Awful. <laughs> that would be, by the way, the most groundbreaking Indy 500. The first lactose intolerant winner of the Indy 500. <laughs> the most daring thing that this driver did all day was <laughs> drink the milk Risked without his taking life. The- <laughs> drinking <laughs> milk. Dairy. Anaphylactic <laughs> shock <laughs> in Victory Lane, the first ever. Uh, okay. But my dad did get to kiss the bricks. Did he really? And nah. that, Dude, your dad. What's your dad's name? Chaz. Uh, Chaz. Yeah, Charles, but they call him Chaz. Chaz. Or Chasmo, Van, whatever you want to Chasmo him. Van Winkle. Hey, no. My God, what a name. Shout out to Chaz. My dad's name was Joel. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, you can spice it up. Joel's Mo. Joel <laughs> uh, at TV dub on Twitter at Travis Van Winkle on Instagram streaming right now on Netflix. First season of FUBAR, so second season to come Go Netflix available right here on Roku. Thanks for coming on. Let's do this more often. Thanks for having me. You got it. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.